Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part two of my var args tutorial. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, and select begin. I'm going to scroll down here to the varargs part 2 tutorial. So this tutorial will discuss the rules for the proper usage of varargs. I will also show you some pitfalls that you should be aware of when integrating varargs into your program. programs. Um, the arguments passed to the method must be of a compatible data type to the varargs data type declaration. When invoking a method, the argument may be passed as an array or as a sequence of arguments. And by the way, when I say argument, it also applies to constructors too as well. So, uh, You may have other parameters in the method parameter list, but only one of varargs parameter, and it must be the last parameter listed. Methods may be overloaded with varargs parameters, but we beware of a problematic situation where an empty argument array or a no arguments is passed. I'll explain an example code. Constructors may also be overloaded with vararg parameters, but be aware of a prob problematic situation where an empty argument array or no arguments is passed. I'll explain that in the example code as well. So, a legal declaration for the main method can include varargs. For example, public static main, and then string, and then our dot 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 our varargs syntax there, and args. Okay. Let's come down here and highlight all this code. I have a bunch of stuff going on in this tutorial, but it's, it's all good stuff there. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen. Come back over here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really easy by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. Okay, type in CMD next and finish. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C and press enter, which is the Java compiler command. Uh, if you should see all this stuff scroll by, however, if you get a, um, an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I'll make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Got a little bit of thunder in the background there, too. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. Um, I'm going to make a directory called Java with the MD command. And I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder, and then I'm going to make a directory, and I'm going to call this one varargs2. I'm going to change to that folder, and then notepad varargs2.java. Okay, let's go ahead and paste all this stuff in there. I did a control V, or you could right click and select paste. All right, let's come up here and save. The first thing I'm going to do is actually, before I start talking about all this stuff here, I'm going to just compile it and run it so we can go through kind of line by line here in the pet, in the main, right? But you'll notice that in the vargs2, because I basically have three classes here. I have vargs2 and I have a, uh, or varargs2, and then I got a varargs constructor and a varargs method, right? And so I'm going to basically go through, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. A couple constructors in the con varargs constructor class and a few methods in the varargs method class. So let's go ahead and save this up here. Now one of the first things I'm going to do here is since I've got this uh, in here, I'm going to set up some command line arguments. So when I actually run the Java to, to run the JVM and invoke the varargs2, in the main method I'm going to pass it some arguments. So we'll see that here. So that's basically what this is going to do is You'll notice I've got the vararg syntax up here in the main method, and I'm just going to use an enhanced for loop to iterate through all of the um, elements of that args array. So um, let's clear my screen, type in Java C. Let's go ahead and compile this, and then Java to run the JVM. And we want to invoke the varargs2 class, and I'm going to just type in, um, oh geez, I don't know, how about one, two, Three, four, five. That sounds good to me. Yeah, no idea how many are going to come in. At least the program doesn't know. I just made that up there. So let's go ahead and run that there. Okay, so in the first line that we have here, we got command line arguments. One, two, three, four, five. OK, 
Okay, so that's basically how that worked right there, right? Um, now let's go down to the next one here. Um, I am just going, um, invoking a new instance of var args constructor class here, and I'm invoking the constructor that basically matches the var args with an int syntax, because I'm passing basically a sequence of int arguments, right? This is not an array, these are just arguments, right? So when we come down here to the var args constructor class, or var args, yeah, constructor class, I've got a var args constructor with a signature of a var args int data type array, right? And that's items here. Now I also have another one where I've overloaded the constructor here with a string var args type array called items. The first thing it'll do is it'll just display this, uh, you know, constructor int data type var args array. So we know which one is actually getting invoked. Um, well, we'll know, but we'll actually be able to see it there, right? And then it'll just iterate using an enhanced for loop here. It'll just iterate through all of the elements in the var args items array here at this point. Same thing with the string thing down here. So based on the data type of the var args, it will pick either this constructor or this constructor, either an int constructor or a string constructor. And that's important to note up here. Because when, uh, when we pass this, all of these arguments are int data type. Okay, uh, I'm gonna come back to my website here. So um, the first thing that I set up here is the arguments passed to the method must be of a compatible data type to the var args data type declaration, right? Okay. So by all of them here, 12, 5, uh, 58, 76, and 10, 24, these are all int data types. So it will come down here and say, hey, do I have a constructor that matches in int types? Yes, I do. Oh, hey, look, it's a var arg syntax. I'm gonna end up loading all those into an int array called items here. Okay, and so that's what we get here down this next line, next line here. Um, Constructor int data type var args array 12, 5, 58, 76, 10, 24, right? So this is exactly what we happen right here. So on the next statement that I'm executing down here, I'm creating a new instance of the var args constructor and I'm invoking the var args constructor constructor with the signature of all strings basically. Now notice this is not an array. These are just a, a sequence of string arguments, right? So it will come down here to the var args constructor class and look for an appropriate constructor that matches the signature. And sure enough here, we got the var args string signature. So it'll display this string literal to the console and then it'll iterate through the items array here, right? Displaying all those to it there, right? So constructor string data type var args array, Tom, Jane, Bill, Mary, Johnny, right? Okay, that, that is perfect right there. So. This is a sequence of string arguments. Now, um, the next thing here is I am creating an uh, int i array, right? And I'm initializing it with these values right here. And then I'm going to pass it. I'm going to create a new var args inst um, instance there and invoke the var args constructor and pass it an int array, right? So it will come down here and says, hey, do I have any sort of int array? Well, a var args is an array. So this matches and says, okay, an int array, and I'm gonna put it into an int array items here. So that's perfect there. Okay, so in our next line, what you can see down here is our int array right here, 123, seven, negative 1034, negative 1200. We can pass that in there, right? If I bring back over my website here, right? Um, when invoking a method, the argument may be passed as an array or a sequence of arguments. And then we're, of course, doing constructor there. I'm going to do the same thing with methods. All right, so I'm just going to go through each one of these bullet points here and, and go one by one to make sure you understand all of them there. Okay? Um, so, with that being said, then, then I've got these two things commented out here. We'll come back to these here in just a second. The next thing I'm going to do is um, just create a reference variable VM um, a, of type var args method class, right, which is this down here, a new var args method, right? And the first thing I'm going to do is invoke the display array, right, method 
and I'm passing it, as you can see, a bunch of in, a sequence of int arguments, right? Now just remember, this is not an int array. It's just a bunch of int arguments. So we come back down here to the var args method class, and we look for the dis the um, the display array method with the appropriate matching signature. Here it is. Uh, yep, this is it. This is uh, this has the int var args type right here, right? Item. So it goes ahead and says um, we're going to go ahead and pass these values out, and then of course that just simply does the exact same thing in the constructor. It says method int data type var args array and loops through the items or the elements in the items array here, right? And that's just what we get right here. So method int data type var args array. Right, bada boom, bada bing, looking good on that. Okay, now let's talk about the next one here. Um, just invoking the display array and I'm passing it three strings, right? So this is a sequence of string arguments here. Same thing, it comes down to this constructor and says, oh, hey, got a var args um, in the parameter list here. So, oh, but not in the constructor, we're in the methods here. So display array, got the string with uh, a var args string signature here so we're going to go ahead and call this one here method string data types var args array plus iterate through all those all right and that's exactly what we get there apple orange pear now in the next statement up here in the main method i'm declaring a string array and i'm initializing it to a b and c right three elements and i'm passing that array here so the display array method since i got it overloaded um, quite a few times down here. It says, hey, do, we, do I have a, a string array type thing here? I got this in, I got a string, I've got another one down here with just a, a string, a var args string, an int var args, int var args array, a string var args array, a string name, and then a second parameter with an int numbers var args array. Okay, um, so it matches this one, so that's what it will display to the console, this plus then those values A, B, C, right? So exactly like there. So that's demonstrating that we can um, pass an array, right? So just reiterating some of the stuff from, the, from up top here, right? The arguments passed the method must be of a compatible data type to the vargs data type declaration, right? When evoking a method, the argument may be passed as an array or a sequence of arguments. All right, um, let's go ahead and come down here and do one more thing here. So um, you may also have other parameters in the method parameter list, but only one var args parameter it must be the last parameter listed. Okay, so I am passing as arguments into the display array method a string value with the string literal lotto numbers colon and then as you can see the rest of the arguments are all just int data types so you could probably picture at this point in time we're looking for a signature with a string variable and a var args int variable and so sure enough here's my uh, overloaded method down here with string name and then an int var args array numbers and now I'll just print a new line, display the name. Notice I'm not using print line, I'm using the print method there. And then just iterate through numbers and display all those to the console. So sure enough, we get, what we get there is um, lotto numbers, 7, 12, 14, 23, 26, 31. That matches exactly what we passed across here. Okay, so that uh, that's looking pretty good there. So let's come back up to, um, actually, let's go ahead and go right here, right? So let's say, for example, um, as you learned in part one, we can pass in a no argument array, right? And that's, that's no problem there. Um, no arguments equals an empty var args array. Now, the problem is, is we don't know which method to use. It's ambiguous. So if we come down here and we're like, okay, um, this is a no argument array, but since we don't know what data type it is, it could be either this one here or it could be this one here. So it doesn't know which one to pick to create it and run its stuff there. So what we get is we, we get lucky and we don't even compile, so it doesn't produce a runtime thing there, just compile time error. Well, let's go ahead and try to compile this again here, right? And we get error. Reference to display array is ambiguous, right? And it's pointing out here and just yelling about, you know, um, both method display, int, 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 
int dot dot dot, which is int var args and in var args method and method display array string dot 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 and var args match, right? So that's basically what it's doing. It's screaming at us and it's saying, okay, you can't do that. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And clear our screen, just rerun it, get it working again. Okay, back to working again. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you got, okay, so I can see this, this right up here. What were to happen if I were to, can I just declare an array like that, right? You no, know, we've only been talking about in methods, but, you know, can I, is this, is this valid outside of a parameter list, basically, right? The answer is no. This only valid syntax inside of a parameter list. So, um, you can't simply, like, initialize it something like that. Show you what happens. It'll go ahead and go off on a compiler error when we do try to compile it, right? So we get just a ton of error messages starting up here with first thing not a statement. So it's just totally bombs out. So just FYI, you cannot use that sort of um, syntax outside of a um, parameter list and the parameter list being, you know, either after a method or a constructor, right, inside of these uh, parentheses, okay? And the only thing I haven't gone over with is what happens when you have a no, um, let's say we do a new var args constructor, right, with no arguments in it. Um, what's going to happen there? Let's clear our screen. We're gonna get another error, right? It's ambiguous again, because once again, it doesn't know which one to pick. We've got this int type, and we got the string type, two var arg types here. And so, no arguments equals empty var args array, which is valid, a var args array, is per empty one is perfectly valid. So it doesn't know which constructor to use, so it's ambiguous, okay? So, then in the same particular hand, we can't create, like, say, a, a reference to, um, of this because this constructor, the no argument constructor doesn't exist. If we try to try to even create that right there, uh, clear screen. As you can see, we get it's ambiguous, and of course it's pointing to the, the new line we just made there, right? Um, it is perfectly valid to do uh, something, of course, like um, like this in the constructor, that would just create a whole new, brand new one again there, right? You have to at least match one of the constructor signatures there in order for that to work just fine there, right? And uh, right, we'll get that displayed a couple of times down there, right? We'll get it here, and then we got it here and here, so. Anyway, so. Um, I'm gonna go just take this out, save. Let's clear our screen and recompile it, rerun it, and put it back to the way it's working there. Okay, so just a quick recap on some of this stuff here, on these, these bullet points here. Um, went over the first three a few times here, but methods may be overloaded with var arg parameters, but beware of a problematic situation where an empty argument array or no arguments is passed. Uh, basically, that creates an ambiguous situation where it doesn't know which method to pick. Same thing in constructors. Constructors may be overloaded with var parameters, but beware of a problematic situation, situation where an empty argument array or no arguments is passed, right? You end up with an ambiguous situation. It doesn't know which constructor to pick. I think I said constructor up here, but I think I meant method, right? So but you're following me. And, of course, a legal declaration for the main method can include var args. Right, which is exactly what I did in the very first line right up here, right? So, anyway, that, uh, that basically is about all the rules for the vargs and some of the pitfalls that can go on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and get this off screen and just leave you with some final thoughts there. So, vargs are a very useful tool. Just be sure to remember that a zero length array is perfectly valid in Java and it will cause, cause ambiguity issues only if you overload your methods or constructors. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.